Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of memory. Have you ever wondered how your brain stores and retrieves information over the long term? Well, stick around because we're about to explore the science behind it and unravel the brain's secrets like a mystery novel. With a dash of humor, of course. Memory, the brain's version of a mixed bag of tricks. It's like trying to find your keys in a cluttered drawer. Sometimes it takes a little while, but you eventually stumble upon them. Let's break it down into three main stages. Encoding, consolidation, and retrieval. First up, we've got encoding. It's the process of transforming sensory input into a form that our brain can use. This can include visual, acoustic, or semantic encoding. Encoding is like your brain's way of taking a mental selfie, capturing the moment and storing it for the future. Because who knows when you'll need that mental Instapost, right? Once the information is encoded, it moves on to consolidation. This is where the memory is stabilized and strengthened for long-term storage. It is a critical phase in the memory-making journey. Think of consolidation as the glue that cements your memories and transforms them from short-term to long-term storage. During consolidation, the neural connections associated with memory are strengthened. This process involves the repeated firing of specific neural pathways, creating a more robust and enduring memory trace. The hippocampus, a seahorse-shaped structure nestled deep within the brain, plays a crucial role in this stage. It is your brain's personal librarian. It's the Dewey Decimal System of Memories, making sure everything is in its right place. Just don't ask it to find your car keys. That's a different department. In addition, the hippocampus integrates new memories with existing knowledge and previous experiences. And speaking of upgrades, did you know that sleep is like the brain's software update? Believe it or not, a good night's sleep is crucial for this process. Many studies have shown that sleep plays a vital role in solidifying memories and enhancing the performance of memory-related tasks. In fact, during sleep, especially during the deep stages like slow-wave sleep, the brain is thought to replay and strengthen the neural connections formed during waking hours. It's like a nightly rehearsal, ensuring memories are firmly encoded into the fabric of your long-term storage. So next time someone asks why you're napping, just tell them you're optimizing your brain's performance. Now let's dive into the microscopic party happening at the synapses. Synapses, the junctions between neurons, undergo structural changes during consolidation. This phenomenon, known as synaptic plasticity, involves the strengthening of connections through a process called long-term potentiation. It's like a brain rave, where the neurons are dancing the macarena, reinforcing those memory connections. Just imagine your brain cells doing the electric slide. It's a party in there! And with repeated stimulation, the synapses become more efficient at transmitting signals, making the memory trace more resistant to decay over time. And who can forget emotions? They're like the spice of memory, turning a bland story into a blockbuster. The amygdala, your brain's drama queen, ensures that the emotional scenes are etched in your memory forever. Now, let's talk about storage. Long-term memory involves the distribution of information throughout the brain in various neural networks. Different regions, such as the hippocampus, amygdala, and cortex, contribute to storing various types of memories. Finally, we have retrieval. When you need to recall information, your brain retrieves the stored memory. Successful retrieval depends on factors like the strength of the memory trace and the context of the recall. But there's another theory that says when you see or hear something, a particular group of neurons or even just one neuron in your brain gets activated in a unique pattern, which codes for that specific thing. The grandmother cell, or Jennifer Aniston neuron, represents a specific concept or object according to this theory. So why Jennifer Aniston? Well, think about her. She's a complex concept in your brain. There's the face, the name, memories of Friends episodes, and maybe even that iconic hairstyle. If there were a neuron dedicated to her in your brain, we'd call it the Jennifer Aniston neuron. Aniston cell activates when a person perceives a specific entity like their grandmother. This is different from ensemble coding, where unique features are detected as a distinct activation pattern across a group of neurons. Encoding complex concepts or faces involves a network of neurons working together, but the grandmother cell theory takes it a step further. It suggests that there might be a single neuron or a small group of neurons firing specifically for a highly specialized concept. 
While the grandmother cell theory adds a touch of humor and celebrity glam to neuroscience, it's still an ongoing debate. Our brains are incredibly intricate, and the way we encode and retrieve complex concepts involves a symphony of neurons working together. So, whether or not there's a dedicated Jennifer Aniston neuron, one thing's for sure, our brains are the ultimate VIP parties. So, there you have it, the brain's memory extravaganza. If you're enjoying this roller coaster ride through the gray matter, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks for tuning in to our channel where we make neuroscience as fun as a barrel of monkeys. Until next time, keep those synapses grooving.